there was no fish in the river, you know, and all us fellas that were a bit passionate about wanting to fish, couldn't catch a fish. <laughs> and then when you did, like I said, you'd come down here and catch 20 fish, well, 19 of them would be carp and one would be a native, you know, so we thought, well, we'll just try and band together a few of us and see if we could change that. And I mean, over the years, it's definitely paid off, you know, it's everything's turning around and you're catching more natives now than carp most times. As far as eating fish go, it's pretty hard to go past the old golden perch or yellow belly as we all call them, but I just like the tranquility of sitting there catching them. And yeah, I usually let everything go. We've been stocking the river and I think we put in about 6,000 Murray cod this year and 25,000 golden perch and we try and do that on a yearly basis. The carp's so resilient, he can live through anything. And they breed so quick, uh, the amount of bloody fry and that they have is just unbelievable. And then I said they rummage on the bottom all the time, eat the other fish eggs and stuff and disturb them. So, you know, they're, they're up as well as breeding so fast themselves, they're knocking the other numbers around at the same time. We're just pulling this carp trap out to check what we've got in it. These traps were developed by Fisheries Queensland staff a couple of years ago. Basically how they work is we've got two wings that sort of guide the carp into this series of fike nets. And then we go into the holding pen there. Then we've got a cod end up this other end here that, that's where we get them out. Figures vary, but I think it's generally agreed that in the Murray-Darling Basin, 90% uh, of the fish biomass is carp. Um, so, you know, they're a real problem. The carp traps, uh, I guess it's um, one method of physically managing carp. There's um, a couple of other methods you can use, and they've all got their pros and cons. The carp busters events, there's around five or six of them throughout the catchments, and although they might not be as effective at reducing carp, they're a really useful tool to um, raise community awareness um, of, of the issues surrounding carp. Environmental issues are community issues, so if you haven't got the community behind you, then you're not going to go anywhere. So it's really important to get community involvement in these problems. You've got a Saturday morning sitting on the riverbank there now in beautiful weather like this, and you could pull in a golden perch like that. <laughs> I think that's pretty hard to beat myself. It's a pretty magic day.